Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back to Auction for the Soul. This week's Pasha is Pasha Shoftim. But before we even jump at the Shoftim, Chodesh Tov, everybody. That's right, it's Rosh Chodesh Elul, which means we are 30 days away from Rosh Hashanah. It's going to happen really, really quick. And we are 40 days away from Yom Kippur. It was today that uh, Moshe took that arduous journey of finding the courage to, and the chutzpah to go back to God and say, God, even though the Jewish people sinned um, with the golden calf, I, you could find a way to forgive them. And he went up and he pleaded and pleaded and pleaded and he did not give up. He would not leave. And 40 days later, he comes down with forgiveness for Am Yisrael with the second set of luchot. That, my friends, happens on Yom Kippur. Yom Kippur is such a powerful day itself that it has the p- power of resetting and rebooting all spiritual ailments, all challenges, all of the things that hold us back from becoming, from whatever holds us back from becoming the best of ourselves. Yom Kippur has the power of being mechaper, kol avonot, all the sins. Now, just to arrive is one thing, you know, but there's a whole other animal, a whole other beast of being able to double down on this idea of growth. And now, the month of Elul, um, you know, is a, uh, the last month of the Jewish calendar for some, and for others, it's the beginning. You know, we know that um, it was in the month of Tishrei that um, God created Adam, and that Rosh Hashanah is the celebration of the birth of man. And therefore, if uh, man was born on the first day of Rosh Hashanah, you and I have the power of tapping into that unique strength of being renewed. And Rosh Hashanah is the Rosh Hashanah. It is the head of the year, which is a very curious title for Rosh Hashanah. Why, doesn't it, why isn't it called Hathalat Hashanah, the beginning of the year? Why isn't it called Reshit Hashanah? Why is it called Rosh Hashanah? And the Chachamim tell us that the reason why it's called Rosh Hashanah is because the way in which you start your year has everything to do with your Rosh. Hakol Holech Achar HaRosh. Everything goes by the way of the head. Everything that we do is very much happening in our mind. And therefore, if you want to have an amazing new year, if you are ready and preparing for an amazing Shana, you know, Haba, right, this next amazing year, the way you do that is by clarifying who you want to be and where you're going. Articulate it, write it down, have a picture in the mind's eye. What do you want to be? Who do you want to go? What do you want to accomplish? That is the power of Elul. Elul is the month of Gad. Gad, Shebet Gad, was the warrior tribe. These are the people that went out and fought. These are the people that went out and were courageous and courage. The greatest battle that we have is a battle with ourselves. And therefore, the month of Elul, Ani le Dodi ve Dodi Li, is a month of love. I am my beloved, as my beloved is to me, because Hashem, Melech Besadeh, God is the king, is in the field. The spiritual, the spiritual power, the potential, it's in the air. If you stop for a second and you close your eyes, and you literally think about where you are right now. You're in Elul. You made it again. This is the year 5,783. We only have 30 days left of it. <laughs> We're soon going to be at 7, 5, 7, 8, 4. Okay? Another year. What do we want that year to look like? Do we want a repeat of that year? Are we willing to push more effort, make more time? Are we willing to spend more time learning? Are we willing to invest in building ourselves? Forget about the past. This is the time to think and fight for our futures. So I'm confident that uh, you will get there. And this is a, uh, a, an amazing introduction to this week's Pasha because this week's Pasha is Pashat Shoftim. And the Pasha begins famously, Shoftim v'shotrin, uh, v'shotrin titen lecha b'chol sha'arecha asher Hashem elokecha noten lecha v'shiftecha v'shavtu et ha'am mishpat tzedek. This is a month of, uh, Pasuk is about judgment. Right? And over here, the Torah is asking you to place judges and police officers by all of your sha'arecha, asher Hashem lokecha noten lecha, that God is giving to you. What are the gates that you need to, where are these gates that are, where are these, where do we find these gates that are all over the place? The Bechol sha'arecha, that you need to put up these shoftim and shotrim, right? So we know, we said this last year, the shoftim and shotrim and the gates are very much correlated to your eyes. Your eyes are the gates to the world around you, your ears, okay, your mouth, what you speak, what you see, what you hear, what you, what you feel, all of that is very much an expression of what this pasuk wants. Shoftim v'shotrim, 
How are you policing what's happening in the most important part of who you are, right? Your head, your eyes, they see so much. We take in so much information all day and we spend zero time creating filters for ourselves. We spend so much time listening to the shtuyot, listening to foolishness, right? Speaking words that are not necessary to be spoken. Forget about the bad stuff. What about all the little things, the incremental things that we do over and over and over again? That's a chaval al azman. Right, that we just we just we're not fully compre- we're not fully 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 appreciative of the small things and how those small things build up over time and time and time. Remember the Yetzahara, there's an evil inclination, and the way he wins is by getting a little spot inside. Oh, it's not really Lashonara, it's just one word. It's not so bad, it's just one thing you just heard. It's not so bad, it's a second, a split second of what you saw. And then one second becomes two seconds, and three seconds become four seconds, and eventually, you know, they say, you know, they say that he comes in the Yitzhahara as a um, as a renter. He comes to rent, okay, and eventually he ends up, you know, staying there for a long time. He's like, I'm not renting. He ends up squatting, and eventually he ends up becoming uh, very, very uh, comfortable where he is. He's never leaving, and in time, he becomes a balabait. He's not just the guy that's standing out there. That's, uh, you know, uh, a, a visitor, but he becomes a permanent fixture. And this month of Elul is, is, is the time where we literally take out our spiritual swords and we're ready to fight to create a space where we're free of those things that hold us back. How do you start? Shoftim v'shotrim titen lecha b'chol she'arecha, all of your gates. That's the only way to become bigger. That's the only way to become greater. How are, what is the path? What is the, what is the system that you're putting in place that allows you to become a greater human being. That's what the Torah wants. Torah saying, how do you do that? Shoftim v'shotrim titen lecha b'chol sharecha. That God has placed before you, Asher Hashem alokecha noten lecha l'shiftecha. And then it says more than that. The second part of it, it's not enough to go ahead and say shoftim v'shotrim. It's not enough to say, okay, you know what? Rabbi, I got it. I'm going to make sure. I got muzzle. I got, I got, I got blinders. I got uh, earmuffs. I'm closing my ears. I'm going to muzzle from my mouth and I will, I'll be okay. But that's not enough. The pasuk ends with vishaftu et ha'am mishpat tzedek. Judge everyone around you righteously in judgment. Stop thinking negatively of the people. Who, I can tell you hundreds of stories, which I don't want to do, of people who, if they, if their whole lives would have been so much better if they, if they could be done the kavshut, right? Be done the kavshut. Stop assuming that you understand the people around you and give them the benefit of the doubt. And by the way, Dan the Kafshut doesn't mean that you just ignore what you see. Dan the Kafshut is you see it, you don't assume the worst, and then I ask the person, hey, what were you thinking? What are you doing? What was your intention? And you'll see, by the way, most of the time, 95% of the time, what, what their intention is not what you were thinking. Now, I'm saying that you, to ask why, because if someone has some ill will, you better point it out and figure it out. Don't be a dumb, don't be a friar. Right, but if someone is, uh, if but give start with the benefit of the doubt and then ask, go out and ask the person, what was your intention? Vishavtu et mishpat tzedek, you figure out a way, judge everyone around you with, with justice. And now the pasuk continues, says lo tete mishpat lo takir panim, don't pervert my justice, right? Don't alti v'lo tikach shochad, don't take any favoritism, ki ashochad yaver ene hachamim. Because a bribe blinds the eyes of the chachamim v'yisalef derei tzadikim and perverts the words of the tzadikim, the just. Now, I have a couple of questions on this pasuk. Number one is, what kind of a tzadik is this? What kind of chacham is this if, if bribes, you know, automatically change him? If you're a tzadik, then you're automatically, you're a good person, the bribe shouldn't, shouldn't bother you. Who cares about the bribe? There are stories of dayanim that would walk into court and the plaintiff would hold the door open for him, and the Dayan would say, I'm sorry, I can't, I can't do the case anymore, I'm out. He's like, why? He said, because you opened the door for me, now I owe you. And I can't judge this case favorably anymore, I can't be, I can't, I, 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 I can't be impartial. I need to pull myself out. Lo titeb mishpat, why? What does the word shochad mean? You know what the word shochad means? Chachamim say, she'ani vehu echad. Shochad means that when I do something for you, you and I become one. Because what is love? Love comes from the word ahava, and the shoresh of ahava is have, to give. When you give to someone, you learn to love them. And you can't see, it blinds the eyes. It, 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 doesn't, it creates a distortion field. I can't see the truth. 
I can't fully appreciate the nuance of a person because of all the things that they're giving to me and providing for me. It blinds the eyes of anybody, not just the Chacham, but even the Chacham. Even the Chacham, it will go ahead and blind them and pervert their words. And therefore, be careful. The people that you were around are the people that the bribery is a very, very terrible thing. But more importantly, just know that any time you do something good for someone, it automatically institutes Hakara Tatov. You have a sense of Hakara Tatov for anyone that does anything for you. And the Torah is saying, be careful with it. Make sure you don't get into trouble with it. Lo tita mishpab lo takir panim. Don't pervert justice. It's got to be fair. We want a fair system. We don't want our society to fall apart. If the society feels that the system of courts are slanted and perverted, which is what I believe, unfortunately, is slowly happening in the United States of America, there becomes all kinds of upheaval. And that leads to the next pasuk. Look at these three pasukim. These are just the first three pasukim of the pasha. Tzedek, tzedek, my favorite pasuk. pasuk. Tzedek, tzedek, tirdof. Why? Justice, justice, you shall pursue. Why? So that you could live and, 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 and hold on to the land that God has given you. What does that mean? The simple pshat, simple explanation is very simple, right? Just have a just society. And if you do, you, your society will grow and uh, you'll be able to keep your government and um, the land that you're on will uh, be... Uh, will be, uh, sorry about that, will be free from all of the, the challenge of the world around us, and uh, you'll grow and grow and grow and grow. But once you don't have justice, what happens? Society falls apart. And that becomes a very dangerous place for you and I to be in. And listen to, but listen, listen to how deep Moshe is. He says, what does he say? Listen to this. this is, don't you realize if I declined you once, I'm going to decline you again? Okay, so, <laughs> um, Tzedek, Tzedek, Tirdof. Why? I mean, you know that Moshe was a stammer, but this wasn't an expression of his stutter. Okay, Tzedek Tzedek Tirdof was not an accident. He's saying Tzedek Tzedek Tirdof. When you want justice, make sure that you're using just means to get that justice. It wasn't too long ago that you and I were uh, living in a city in New York, if you're here, right, where people wanted justice. There was George Floyd who was killed in, just, you know, in an unjust way, however you would take the story, okay? And people wanted justice. So what did they do? They went out and they protested. How did they protest? Burning cars, looting, pillaging. That's not justice. All too often, in the name of justice, people will use justice to pervert justice. And Moshe is saying, you're going to the land of Eretz Israel. You're going to build a society? Tzedek, but tzedek, tirdof. When you're looking for justice... Don't rationalize. Don't rationalize your lies. Right? Be clear about what you're doing. Tzedek, tzedek, tirdof. Laman tichyeh. Tzedek, betzedek, tirdof. If you don't have righteousness and justice at the forefront of what you are trying to accomplish for your injustice, you are not going to live and inherit the land. You'll destroy yourselves. And that, my friends, is not the land that you and I want to live in. That is not the land that you and I want to uh, go ahead and possess. Okay, I want to end, uh, you know, end with this last idea. Pasuk says, Tamim tiyeh im Hashem elokecha. Right? You, you got to be uh, tamim. Tamim means, means you got to be pure. You got to be whole. Right? You got to be someone who is able to, um, to just be someone who is able to receive God in the most beautiful possible way, for someone who is able to be wholehearted with God. That's what the word tamim means, to be wholehearted with Hashem. Okay, now, um, look, listen to what Rashi says. Rashi says as follows, he says, tamim tihyeh im Hashem lokecha. He says, hitalech imo bitmimut. Walk with God bitmimimut, right? Just in the most simplest way, bitetzapelo. And depend on him. And don't go after the future. Forget about the future. Don't go to fortune tellers. Don't go to mikubalim. Forget about that stuff. Rather, whatever comes to you, right? Accept everything that happens to us in our lives in the most beautiful, simplest, unadulterated way. 
Ba'az, and then tiye imo lechalko, you will be for him as a uh, inheritor, as an impor- uh, someone who was able to receive God's portion. This pasuk is so profound. Unfortunately, we live in a time where people are searching all kinds of uh, what I call quick fixes. Oh, hey, I just got, uh, I heard, I got this craving, this amazing Nikubal. He's able to look into the future. He can read your palms. He can look at your eyes and your eyebrows. It's just for 250 for 10 minutes, and, but it's worth it because he sees everything. The second someone is coming down and they're telling you they're going to have these magical cures and they got money, run away. Tamim im Hashem elokecha. This is not the Jewish way. It's nonsense. The Jewish way is to be tamim. I accept everything that I have mit in the most wholehearted, simplest way. That is the world that I live in. Tamim im Hashem elokecha. Judaism is not rocket science. Judaism was designed for people that want to live a life of meaning and beauty, people that want to build a world, people that want to make a world a greater place, people that understand that we're here to work and accomplish and achieve. But it doesn't work if we don't have a just society. It doesn't work if we are not able to guard Shoftim Shotrim, if we're not able to put up the proper systems in place. But if you have all that and you're unable to be tamim, you're in trouble. Forget about, don't look at the stargazers. Forget about the news. The news is designed, the perfect, perfect instrument of the Yetzahara. To do what? To waste your time. I've been watching the news for 25 years. And I want you to know, it's exactly the same story. Just new props. New presidents, new uh, issues. But really, it's the same story. It's the whole thing is designed to distract you from the truth. You know what the truth is? I'll tell you. Ready? The truth is, is that you have infinite potential to accomplish anything you set your mind to. And the, the Yetzirah wants to distract you from it. He does two things. One is distraction, laziness. I can't see, I can't feel, I'm just too distracted, but I'm too upset about what's happening in the world. And lastly, it's I, I, just a negative mindset. Tamim tihiyeh. Trust the system. Be the simcha. You're in the month of Elul, which means you, the power to change everything is literally right there. It's in your hands. Forget about the future. The way you do it is Hayom. God gives us today. We choose whether or not it's a bracha or klala, it's Rosh Chodesh, Elul. It's the beginning of infinite potential for each of us. My bracha to each of you is that you are able to institute the proper, um, put, set up the proper systems that allow you to become the better, greater version of yourself. Do it, but tzedek, tzedek tirdof, right? Tamim tiye im Hashem lokecha. Accept everything that has that happens to you in your lives, and I promise you, keep it simple, stupid. Kiss, right? You will be besimcha. You have everything that you want. It's waiting. Hashem wants to give you everything. He just wants you to move a little. Wishing you all a Shabbat Shalom, a Chodesh Tov, to school, a Shanim Rabot, and Imot. Soon we're going to say it, right? Shana Ba, Shana Tova, Metuka, everybody. Lots of love. We'll see you all soon. If you're here for Shabbat, please join me at the Safra Synagogue for Shabbat the Shabbat. Looking forward to seeing you all soon. Lots of love. Thank you so much for joining online.